The electron transport chain occurs in the mitochondria. So in the mitochondria we've got an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The inner membrane is highly folded like this to increase the surface area. So that's called the inner membrane, it's the outer membrane. Inside here in the middle is called the matrix and this here is the space between the two membranes. This, this here is the inner membrane. So this is where the, the electron transport chain occurs is along this inner membrane. So imagine this here is occurring along here. Now, you'll recall that the, um, the whole point of the, the Krebs cycle is to release high energy electrons from the glucose. And those high energy electrons are then transported to the electron transport chain by NADH. So we've got this NADH that comes along to the electron transport chain and these protein complexes are on the inner membrane and they release their hydrogen and their high energy electrons. So what comes out is just NAD+. So it's releasing both the high energy electrons, the high energy electrons then um, start to step down through a series of processes uh, reactions and as they do they're losing energy but importantly as they lose their energy they're using that energy to pump the hydrogen um, ions up through these protein complexes up into the space in between the two membranes so each one of our electrons is pumping a hydrogen ion up and so this is continuing on and on and on through each one ton of protein complexes. We're putting a hydrogen ion, which is the same as a proton, up through, through active transport. The energy comes from the high energy electrons and is pumping more and more hydrogen ions up into this space. So that means that we set up this concentration gradient because we've got more hydrogen up here in the space between the two membranes than we've got in the matrix. Now you'll recall from your year 9 biology with uh, osmosis that when we've got a concentration gradient well the ions are going to move back along that concentration gradient just absolutely passively and when they do that they do that by passing through this thing here called ATP synthase so that's an enzyme and every time we have a hydrogen ion that goes back through ATP synthase, it produces a ATP atom, uh, a molecule, because we have ADP plus our loose phosphate. And every time we have a hydrogen come through there, it turns the ATP synthase and produces an ATP. So this is really where most of the uh, ATP is produced in cellular respiration is through the electron transport chain. And what happens then to our hydrogens and our electrons at the end of this is that they get mopped up by oxygen to produce water. So we've got oxygen plus we've got these hydrogens and ultimately it produces H2O. Now of course that's not balanced but the point is is the same that we need the oxygen for aerobic respiration to mop up or collect to receive the electrons and our protons or our hydrogen ions at the end of the electron transport chain. If we're if there's no oxygen then there's no way that the electron transport chain is able to proceed so it stops at glycolysis and will not proceed unless there's enough oxygen.